Welcome to the Chemistry, Biology and Math Revision Hub. Today we are doing the Pearsonet Excel International A Level, Biology Unit 6 for October 2021. Let us begin with question 1. Question 1. The photograph shows an aquatic plant, Elodia canadensis, which is what we see here. These plants were originally from North America but are now found in Europe, South America, Asia, Australia and parts of Africa. They live in ponds, lakes and slow-flowing rivers. If the stem of the plant is cut underwater, bubbles of oxygen gas are released from the cut end of the stem as the plant photosynthesizes. Moving on. Here they say, describe an experiment to investigate the effect of different wavelengths of light on the rate of photosynthesis of a lord year canadensis. With these kinds of questions, always begin by stating the dependent variable, in this case, what you want to measure. So I say the dependent variable is the volume of oxygen produced within a specific time. This is what we're going to use to calculate the rate. Also, remember to write that you should set up at least five different experiments. If you set up less than five, you could lose marks. So I say set up a glass beaker and position the pond width inside. Let the stock of the pond width face a funnel connected to a capillary tube and a syringe. Use aluminum foil to block light from entering the beaker on one side and use two light filters. In this experiment, one is going to be the control where we have the white light and the other could be one or more colored light filters in order to vary the wavelength. Then I said add sodium hydrogen carbonate to the beaker as a source of carbon dioxide to the pan weed. And again, remember, CO2 cannot be added as a gas because if you add it as a gas, then it's going to confuse with the volume of oxygen we're trying to measure. So it needs to be added as solid sodium hydrogen carbonate which can be stirred in order to dissolve. Then collects the oxygen produced within a specific period, which is about 30 minutes. You need to allow the pond with time to acclimatize. This allows it to get used to the new conditions before we can measure again. Then control the temperature with a heat shield. You need to control the pH using a buffer. And finally, repeat the experiment at other filters and calculate the mean. This is the setup of the experiment. You can see aluminum foil is positioned on this side. We have the beaker containing water, and this is the pond width. This is the funnel, and the cut end is facing the funnel, so we see this is a capillary tube, and there is water inside. As oxygen is released from here, it is going to be collected by the syringe. The light source is going to be coming from one side, and that ensures that the plant is exposed to the same light intensity, as well as wavelength. Position the light filter between the source of light and the experimental setup in order to vary the wavelength. And finally, you can calculate the rate of photosynthesis by dividing the volume of gas produced with the time in which the experiment was carried out. Moving on. Here they say explain how the features of the grana in a chloroplast enable photosynthesis to occur. We know that grana contains thylakoids, so I say that grana is a stack of membranes. It provides a large surface area for photosynthesis to occur. And again, photosynthesis partly occurs in the thylakoid, so we need to know that. It contains chlorophyll, the pigment that absorbs sunlight, and the grana contain enzymes that are useful in the light-dependent reactions. So this brings us to the end of question one. Let's continue to question two. Question two, information about depth and rate of breathing in humans can be obtained using a spirometer. A student investigated the effect of exercise on breathing rate and respiratory immunoventilation. ventilation. The diagram shows a spirometer trace for a person resting quietly. So these are the results and they've given us the scale. Horizontally, we can see 10 small squares represent 10 seconds. And that means each small square represents one second. And vertically, we can see these are 20 small squares which represent one decimeter cubed. So the first question says calculate the main breathing rate for this person. I wanted to calculate the rate, so I used this line you can see here. We observed that there are four breaths in 10 seconds, and we know one second is equal to one over 60 minutes. And in one over 60 minutes, there are four over 10 breaths. Then one minute is equal to four over 10 times 60, which is equal to 24 breaths. So my answer is 24 breaths per minute. Moving on, here they say, estimate the main respiratory minute ventilation for this person. Ventilation rate is equal to tidal volume in decimeters cubed times frequency of inspiration, that is, in per minute. I had to calculate the tidal volume, which I did using the graph here. 
I use this scale here. We can see vertically 20 small squares represent one decimeter cubed. And since these are 15, 15 are going to represent 0 0.75 decimeters cubed. So according to this, my answer, because I use this one here, is about 0 0.75 decimeters cubed. My calculation is as we can see here. The acceptable answer should be between that and that. The next part was frequency of inspiration, which I have as 24 per minute. So my answer was 0 0.75 times 24, which gave me 18 decimeters cubed per minute. And again, this is going to be volume over time. So my answer was 18. The acceptable answer here is between 13.2 to 18 decimeters cubed per minute. Down here they say during exercise, respiratory minute ventilation increases. Explain why it is necessary for the respiratory minute ventilation to increase during exercise. During exercise, muscle contraction occurs and this requires a lot of ATP, so more oxygen has to be supplied for aerobic respiration to occur in order for sufficient ATP to be provided for muscle contraction to be attained. So I say during exercise, more ATP is required, so the inspiratory minute ventilation increases to deliver more oxygen required for aerobic respiration so that more ATP is available for muscle contraction. It also enables the removal of carbon dioxide. Moving on, part B says, state one abiotic and one biotic variable that could affect this investigation. The abiotic variable could be room temperature as well as altitude, and the biotic one could be age, gender, the intensity of exercise, as well as lung capacity. Then down here they said, Choose one of the variables you have identified in B1. Describe how this variable could be controlled and the effect it could have on the results if it's not controlled. I chose age. Ensure that all participants have the same age and that means we can control the results or we can get results that are reliable. So if age is not controlled or if people are not the same age, the results will not be valid because people of different ages could have different lung capacity as well as physiology. This should be physiology. Let me correct that. Physiology. That should be a Y as well as physiology. So that. Okay. So this brings us to the end of question two. Let's continue to question three. Question three. Maram grass is a plant found on coastal sand dunes in Europe and North Africa. The plant is well adapted for living on sand dunes. The leaves can grow to over one meter length. The photograph shows marum grass growing on sand dunes. So here we can see that. They say a student observed that the leaves seem to be longer in some parts of the dune than others. A transect was set up from the base of the dune to the top of the dune. At two meter intervals along the transect, 10 plants were selected. This is very important here. They say 10 plants, so I'm going to mark it. 10 plants were selected. One leaf, again, that one leaf from each plant was measured using a meter rule. So they say the diagram shows the transect on the sand dune. So this diagram shows the transect on the sand dune, and we can see from 0 to 12 meters, that is the sand dune. And then the marum grass leaves were measured at those locations. Moving on. Here they say identify one risk you might encounter when carrying out this investigation and how you could reduce this risk. The risk is... Some plants could have allergens, meaning they can cause allergic reactions on the person who is working with them. Also, there could be trips and slips because this is a dune, so you have to take great care in order not to fall. How can we reduce this risk? You need to wear gloves in order to prevent the allergens from touching your skin. And you need to wear appropriate footwear in order not to sleep. Down here they say the table shows the results of this investigation. So we can see at the different locations along the dune, or as we move up along the dune, we can see the mean length is changing. We can see that we obtain the greatest mean length at 8 meters from the zero mark point. So the question says, state a suitable null hypothesis for this investigation. Because we are varying the position of the dune and measuring the mean length, this should be a correlation. So I say there is no correlation between the mean length of the leaves of marum grass and the position on the dune. Continuing on, here they say plot a suitable graph to show the effect of position on the dune on the mean length of the marum grass. I had to plot the mean length of leaves in centimeters on the vertical axis and then on the horizontal axis I had to write the position on the dune in meters. So 
if I zoom in, you can see that is how my graph looks like. I chose an appropriate scale that was easier to work with, vertically as well as horizontally, and that is how my graph came out. So moving on. Here they say a student used a statistical test to analyze the data. To calculate the correlation coefficient, the student produced this table. So we can see again position on the gen, the ranks for A, the ranks for B, we have the D, and then the D squared was not given. So the first part said calculate the correlation coefficient RS using the formula, which is this one here. We know n is equal to 7. How do we know? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 7 experiments were carried out, and therefore n is going to be 7. However, we do not know d squared, so we have to fill the table right here. That squared gives us 1. That squared gives us 1. That squared gives us 0. That squared is 0. That squared is 4. That squared is 1. And that squared is 1. When we add up everything here, we get summation of d squared is equal to 8. So I used 8 in my calculation. Like I said already, n is equal to 7. Summation d squared is 8. So Rs should be 1 minus 6 times a divided by 7 into 7 squared minus 1. And using my calculator, I got 0 0.8571, which I rounded off to 0 0.857. And that was my answer. This is my calculated value. Next, they say the table shows some critical values for this statistical test. So we have the numbers of pairs of values. Of course, there were seven pairs. And the level of significance, p, in biology, we use 0.05. So the corresponding value should be this. It matches with that as well as there. So this should be my critical value. Here they said, explain the conclusion that can be drawn from this investigation and use your graph, your calculated RS value and the table of critical values to support your answer. So here I said, the calculated value 0.857 is greater than the critical value 0.786. So reject the null hypothesis. And therefore, there is a significant correlation between the position on the dune and the mean length of the leaves. Moving on. Here they say, describe three improvements that can be made to this investigation. I want to take you back to the beginning where they said how the experiment was carried out. So here they said, and again, remember the things I marked, at two meter intervals along the transect, 10 plants were used. Instead of 10 plants, maybe they could use 20 or 15 get more plants and then measure the lengths of the leaves that could improve the results and also they could measure more leaves from each plant in order to improve the validity of the results and finally instead of using a meter rule they could use a longer measuring tape in order to make the results more believable so here i said increase the number of measured plants at each position on the dune use a measuring tape instead of a meter rule and then repeat the experiment at similar heights on a different place on that same dune. And then finally, measure plants at more heights on the dune. All these points could lead to the improvement of the investigation. Here they say suggest one abiotic factor that may cause the difference in length of the marm grass leaves at these positions on the dune. Of course, salinity, pH, availability of water, light intensity, mineral ions, as well as fertility of the soil or what you say soil humus, any of these could affect the length of the marm grass leaves that were sampled. Moving on, finally they say describe how this factor could be measured to produce valid comparisons in this investigation. I chose soil pH. How can we measure soil pH? We have to sample the soil appropriately or correctly. So I said collect the soil sample from different heights at two meter intervals along the dune and ensure that the samples are collected from the same depth of the dune. Then use a pH meter to measure the pH of the soil. So this brings us to the end of question three. Let's continue to question four. Question four says, fresh pineapple contains an enzyme called bromelain. A student thought that fresh pineapple juice might affect the growth rate of bacteria. The student formed the following hypothesis. E. coli growing in liquid culture will have a slower growth rate if fresh pineapple juice is added to the liquid culture. Bacteria can be grown in liquid culture using nutrient broth as the growth medium. Plan an investigation to find evidence to support or reject this hypothesis. 
Part essays describe preliminary practical work that you might undertake to ensure your proposed method would provide quantitative results. Now, usually in the preliminary practical work, we have to determine how are we going to vary the independent variable? How are we going to measure the dependent variable? For how much time is the experiment going to be carried out? And finally, how are we going to keep some variables constant? So I said, find a suitable volume, or you could say concentration of pineapple juice to be added to the bacteria culture, and then find the optimum temperature and the pH at which the experiment is going to be carried out. Find the suitable incubation time for the bacteria. This is time for the experiment to be carried out. And finally, find a suitable way of measuring bacteria growth. You could use serial dilution or turbidity accompanied with hemocytometry. And then you need to know the ways to compare the growth rate. Moving on. Here they say, devise a detailed method including how you would control and monitor important variables. To answer these kind of questions, ensure that you do not list your points and always begin by stating the dependent variable. And since this involves culturing microorganisms, we have to talk about using aseptic techniques. I always advise people to write this earlier on because you might forget it. So I say the dependent variable is the number of bacteria per time. And again, please ensure that you say number of bacteria per time because this is going to be the rate. Then use aseptic techniques in this experimentation. Squeeze the pineapples to extract the juice and filter the juice to obtain only the liquid. Pineapples used should be of the same age and if possible, they should be grown in similar conditions. The better way could be using juice from the same pineapple if you can find one that is big enough. Then I said set up at least five experiments of liquid broth cultures with varying concentrations of pineapple juice and include one without pineapple juice as a control experiment. Culture for 24 hours, but periodically sample the culture and use stereo dilution or turbidity to record the number of bacteria per time. Calculate the growth rate by dividing the number of bacteria by the time. And also ensure that pH is kept constant using a buffer. Also control temperature by setting the incubator at the same temperature in all experiments. I said using an incubator because this is liquid culture. So you could probably be carrying it out in an incubator at a preset temperature, so you should do that. And finally, repeat the experiments at similar conditions to obtain the mean. In part C, they say, describe how your results should be recorded, presented and analyzed in order to draw conclusions from your investigation. I did not draw anything in this space and it's not a requirement for you to draw anything, so I just wrote down here. So I said, present raw data in a table with headings and appropriate units. You need to repeat all experiments and calculate the mean and include a column for the mean in the table. Then present the data in a suitable graph with headings and units. And finally, use a suitable statistical test to make a conclusion. A suitable statistical test could be like Spearman's that could help you to establish significance. Moving on. Finally, they say suggest three limitations of your proposed method. The proposed method of using serial dilution could lead to some erroneous results. And again, remember, we inoculated the liquid culture using a pre-cultured liquid media. So that means the uneven distribution of microorganisms or bacteria in the previous culture could lead to uneven concentrations of bacteria being inoculated in the new medium, And that could cause the variations in the concentration of bacteria in our new media. So I said, uneven distribution of bacteria in the broth can make cell counts difficult. The growth rate may be affected by waste accumulation. This is possible because usually after 12 or 14 hours, we start to see the graph begin to curve in, meaning the wastes are accumulating and there are fewer nutrients, so that could affect the growth rate. Then using serial dilution could lead to incorrect results. If the initial bacteria resulted in one colony, remember in serial dilution, we assume the colonies counted were each an individual bacterium initially. However, if two bacteria ended up becoming one colony in the end because they were too close to each other, that means we could count two as one, and when we multiply with the times we've diluted, that causes great errors in the final results. So this brings us to the end of question four, as well as to the end of this paper. Thank you for being with us. Do not forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.